Hey guys, welcome back to another True Crime Thursday. Today I'm going to be talking about the murder of Pat Garrett, the man who killed Billy the Kid. A cowboy sheriff who had a lot of money issues and was murdered. And the question is, is this case solved? Or, it, or is it not? Let's find out together, shall we? <laughs> Patrick Floyd Jarvis Garrett was born on June 5, 1850, in Chambers County, Alabama. He was the second of five children born to John Lumpkin Garrett and Elizabeth Ann Jarvis. Garrett's four siblings were Margaret, Elizabeth, John, and Alfred. Garrett was of English ancestry. His ancestors migrated to America from the English regions of Hertfordshire, Northamptonshire, Bedfordshire, Link Lincolnshire, and Buckinghamshire. Jesus Christ, how many shires are in England? <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> when Pat was three years old, his father purchased the John Greer Plantation in Claiborne Parish, Louisiana. The Civil War, however, destroyed the Garrett family finances. Their mother died on March 25th, 1867, at the age of 37. Then, the following year, on February 5th, 1868, his father died at age 45. The children were left with a plantation that was more than $30,000 in debt. The children were taken in by relatives. The 18-year-old Garrett headed west from Louisiana on January 25th, 1869. Garrett's whereabouts over the next seven years are obscure. By 1876, he was in Texas hunting buffalo. During this period, Garrett killed his first man, another buffalo hunter, named Joe Briscoe. Garrett surrendered to the authorities at Fort Griffin, Texas, but they declined to prosecute. Why? I don't know. <laughs> when the buffalo hunting declined, Garrett left Texas and rode to the New Mexico Territory. When Garrett arrived at Fort Sumner, New Mexico, he found work as a cowboy for Pedro Menard Pete Maxwell. Garrett's first wife was Juanita Martinez, who died 15 days after they were married. Interesting. That's kind of sus, but also unfortunate. On January 14, 1880, Garrett married his second wife, Apolina Guerreras. Uh, between 1881 and 1905, Apolinaria gave birth to eight children, Ida, Dudley, Elizabeth, Annie, Patrick, Pauline, Oscar, and Jarvis. Billy the Kid, born Henry McCarty, and also known as William H. Bonney, was wanted for murder in the aftermath of the Lincoln County War. On November 2nd, 1880, Garrett was elected sheriff of Lincoln County, New Mexico, having defeated the incumbent, Sheriff George Kimball, by a vote of 320 to 179. Although Garrett's term would not begin until January 1st, 1881, Sheriff Kimball appointed him a deputy sheriff for the remainder of Kimball's term. Garrett also obtained a deputy U.S. Marshal's commission, which allowed him to pursue the kid across state lines. Garrett and his posse stormed the Dedrick Ranch at Bascu Grande on November 30th, 1880. They expected to find the kid there, but only succeeded in capturing John Joshua Webb, who had been charged with murder, along with an accused horse thief named George Davis. Garrett turned Webb and Davis over to the sheriff of San Miguel County a few days later and moved on to the settlement of Puerto de Luna. There, a local tough named Mariano Leva picked a fight with Garrett and was shot in the shoulder. On December 19th, 1880, Billy the Kid, Charlie Baudray, Tom Pickett, Billy Wilson, and Tom O'Fulliard rode into Fort Sumner. Lying in wait were Deputy Garrett and his posse. Mistaking O'Fulliard for the Kid, Garrett's men opened fire and killed him. Billy and the others escaped unharmed. Three days later, Garrett's posse cornered Billy and his companions at a spot called Stinking Springs. They killed one man and captured the others. On April 15th, 1881, Billy the Kid was sentenced to hang by Judge Warren Bristol, but escaped 13 days later, killing two deputies on the way out. On July 14th, 1881, Garrett visited Fort Sumner to question a friend of the kids about, the whereab about his whereabouts and learned he was staying with a mutual friend. Pedro Menard Pete Maxwell. Around midnight, Garrett went to Maxwell's house. 
The kid was asleep in another part of the house, but woke up in the middle of the night and entered Maxwell's bedroom, where Garrett was standing in the shadows. The kid did not recognize the man standing in the dark and asked him repeatedly, Quien es? Which means, who is it? And Garrett replied by shooting him. Twice. <laughs> the first shot hit the kid in the chest just above his heart, and the second one missed. Garrett's account leaves it unclear if the kid died instantly or if it took a little while. But yeah, he just didn't even say anything. He just shot the kid right away. Just pow. Garrett co-authored The Authentic Life of Billy the Kid with Ash Upson, and for decades his book was deemed authoritative. Following Billy the Kid's death, writers quickly went to work producing books and articles that made a folk hero out of Billy the Kid, while making Garrett seem like an assassin. Although filled with many errors of fact, The Authentic Life served afterward as the main source for most books written about the kid until the 1960s. A failure when originally released, an original copy of the Pat Garrett Ash Upston book became a rare commodity. In 1969, the original 1882 edition of the Garrett Upston book was described by Raymond F. Adams as being extremely rare. 20th century editions of Garrett's Authentic Life of Billy the Kid, with alterations to the original title, appeared in 1927, 1946, and 1964. Garrett did not seek re-election as sheriff of Lincoln County in 1882. He moved to Texas, where he ran for office as a state senator and was declined that seat. Garrett became a captain with the Texas Rangers for less than a month, then returned to Roswell, New Mexico. Garrett discovered a large reservoir of artisan water in the Roswell region and went into partnership with two men to organize the Pecos Valley Irrigation and Investment Company. On July 18, 1885, Garrett kept his irrigation schemes alive for several years, and on January 15, 1887, he purchased a one-third interest in the Texas Irrigation Ditch Company, but the partners got rid of him. On August 15, 1887, he formed a partnership with William L. Holloman in the Holloman and Garrett Ditch Company. All of Garrett's forays into the irrigation field, however, resulted in failure. By 1892, Garrett had moved his large family to Uvalde, Texas, where he became close friends with John Nance Garner, a future vice president of the United States. Garrett might have lived out the remainder of his life in Uvalde had it not been for a headline-making event back in New Mexico. On January 31st, 1896, Colonial Albert Jennings Fountain and his eight-year-old son Henry disappeared on the edge of the White Sands area of southern New Mexico. Neither of the fountains were ever seen again. The mystery was never officially solved, even with the efforts of Apache scouts, the Pinkertons, and an all-out push by the Republican Party. In April of 1896, Garrett was appointed sheriff of Doña Ana County and two years later had gathered sufficient evidence to make arrests, asking a judge in Las Cruz for warrants in their arrest of Oliver M. Lee, William McNew, Bill Carr, and James Gilland. Within hours, he had arrested McNew and Carr. During the early morning hours of July 12, 1898, Garrett and his posse confronted Oliver M. Lee and James Gilland at a spot called Wiley Well, near Ora Grande, New Mexico. Garrett had hoped to capture the fugitive while they were sleeping, but Lee and Gilland suspected something may happen, so they decided to put their bedrolls on the roof so they wouldn't be surprised by an attack. One of Garrett's deputies, named Kearney, heard footsteps on the roof, scaled a ladder, and was mortally wounded by the fugitives. A stray shot nicked Garrett. Due to his concern for his dying deputy, Garrett arranged a truce with the fugitive and withdrew while Kearney was lifted into a wagon. Kearney, however, died on the road to Las Cruz, and Lee and Gilland remained at large for another eight months before they were finally surrendered to Sheriff George Curry. They were found not guilty in the Fountain killings, and the indictments for killing the deputy were also dismissed. So, basically, jack squat. Garrett got one of his deputies murdered, and the guys didn't even get in trouble for it. Rude, my guy. Garrett killed his last offender in 1899, a fugitive named Norman Newman, who was wanted for murder in Greer County, Oklahoma. Newman was hiding out at the San Augustin Ranch in New Mexico. Sheriff George Belloc of Greer County went to New Mexico and asked Garrett for his assistance. 
the lawman, and Jose Espelin, one of Garrett's deputies, rode to the ranch, and on October 7th, 1899, Newman was killed in a gunfight. On December 16th, 1901, President Theodore Roosevelt nominated Garrett to the post of Collector of Customs in El Paso. He also became one of President Roosevelt's three White House gunfighters, which include Bat Masterson and Ben Daniels. Despite public outcry over his appointment, Garrett was confirmed by the U.S. Senate on January 2nd, 1902. Garrett's tenure as El Paso's Collector of Customs was stormy from the start. On May 8, 1903, he got into a public fistfight with an employee named George Gaither. The following morning, both Garrett and Gaither paid $5 for disturbing the peace. <laughs> Continued complaints about Garrett's alleged incompetence was sent to Washington. Through it all, President Roosevelt stood by Garrett. He was like, he's a great guy. No, he's not a great guy. As a show of his support, Roosevelt invited Garrett to attend a Rough Riders reunion being held in San Antonio during April of 1905. Since Garrett had not been a member of the regiment, Roosevelt's invitation was taken as a snub at those critics who wanted Garrett replaced from his post. Garrett brought a guest of his own to the event named Tom Powers. Garrett introduced Powers to the president as a prominent Texas cattleman. Garrett and Powers posed for two photographs with Roosevelt, first standing with him in a group and later seated with Roosevelt at dinner. Garrett's enemies obtained copies of the photos and sent them to Roosevelt, informing the president that instead of being the cattleman that Garrett claimed, Powers was in fact the owner of a notorious dive in El Paso called the Coney Island Saloon. That was the final straw for Roosevelt, who replaced Garrett with a new collector of customs on January 2nd, 1906. Following his dismissal, Garrett returned with his family to New Mexico. Garrett was in deep financial difficulty. His ranch had been heavily mortgaged, and when he was unable to make payments, the county auctioned off all of Garrett's personal belongings um, to satisfy judgments against him. The total from the auction came to $650. President Roosevelt had appointed Pat's friend George Curry as the territorial governor of New Mexico. Garrett met with Curry, who promised him the position of superintendent of a territorial prison at Santa Fe once he was inaugurated. Since Curry's inauguration was still months away, the destitute Garrett left his family in New Mexico and returned to El Paso, where he found employment with the real estate firm of H.M. Mabel and Company. During this period, Garrett moved in with a woman known as Miss Brown, who is described as an El Paso prostitute. When Governor-elect Curry learned of his involvement with Brown, the promised appointment of prison superintendent was withdrawn. It was like, oh, you're hanging out and living with a prostitute? Nah. Deal's off. You're not getting that position. Like, oh. Thanks, man. Dudley Poe Garrett, Pat's son, had signed a five-year lease for his Bear Canyon Ranch with Jesse Wayne Brazel. Garrett and his son objected when Brazel began to bring in large herds of goats. Garrett tried to break the lease when he learned that the money for Brazel's operation had been put up by his neighbor, W.W. Bill Cox. He was further angered when he learned that Archie Prentice Print Road was Brazel's partner in the huge goat herd. When Brazel refused, the matter went to court. At this point, James B. Miller met with Garrett to try to solve the problem. Miller met with Brazel, who agreed to cancel his lease with Garrett, provided a buyer could be found for his herd of 1,200 goats. Carl Admanson, who was related to Miller by marriage, agreed to buy the 1,200 goats. Just when the matter seemed resolved, Brazel claimed that he had miscounted, and instead of 1,200 goats, he had 1,800 goats. Admanson refused to buy that many goats, but agreed to meet with Garrett and Brazel to try and figure out a different solution. Garrett and Carl Admanson rode together, heading from Las Cruz, New Mexico, in Admanson's wagon. Brazel appeared on horseback along the way. Garrett was shot and killed, but exactly by whom remains the subject of controversy. Brazel and Admanson left the body by the side of the road and returned to Las Cruz, where Brazel surrendered to Deputy Sheriff Felipe Lucero. More than 30 years later, Lucero claimed that Brazil exclaimed, Lock me up! I've just killed Pat Garrett! Brazil then pointed to Admanson and said, He saw the whole thing and knows that I shot in self-defense. Lucero incarcerated Brazil, summoned a coroner's jury, and rode to Garrett's death site. Brazil's trial for Garrett's murder concluded on May 4th, 
1909. Zoe was represented at his trial by attorney and future Secretary of the Interior, Albert Bacon Fall. The only eyewitness to Garrett's murder, Admondson, never appeared at the trial, which lasted only one day and ended with an acquittal. So basically it's like, I did it, and then it just, nope, acquitted. So even if he did it, it didn't get punished. <laughs> the coroner's report on Garrett's death states that Brazil shot Garrett. Brazil reportedly confessed, but was acquitted at trial. Four other suspects have been proposed, Admondson, Cox, Rode, and Miller. In a book published in 1970, Glenn Shirley gave his reasons for naming Miller as the killer of Pat Garrett. Leon C. Metz, in his 1974 biography of Garrett, related the claim of W.T. Moyers, that his investigations led him to believe that W.W. W. Cox himself ambushed and killed Garrett but also wrote that the Garrett family believes that Carl Adamson pulled the trigger. In his 2010 book on Billy the Kid and Pat Garrett, Mark Lee Gardner suggests that Archie Prentice Print Road killed Garrett. The site of Garrett's death is now corroborated by a historical marker south of U.S. Route 70 between Las Cruces, New Mexico, and the San Augustin Pass. The historical marker is located 1.2 miles from where Garrett was murdered. In 1940, his son, Jarvis Garrett, marked the spot with a monument consisting of concrete laid around a stone with a cross carved in it. The cross is believed to be the work of Garrett's mother. Scratched in the concrete is P. Garrett and the date of his killing. The marker is located in the desert. Garrett's body was too tall for any finished coffins available, so a special one had to be shipped from El Paso. His funeral service was held March 5, 1908 and he was laid to rest next to his daughter, Ida, who had died in 1896 at the age of 15. Garrett's grave and the graves of his descendants are in the Masonic Cemetery in Las Cruz. To conclude, I don't really know. I mean, there really isn't a lot of information. Like, the guy confessed. He was acquitted, which sucks, so the guy who murdered him doesn't really, you know, get punished. Um, but he confessed to it. There are theories that other people did it, but there's not enough information to be like, yeah. You know, so it's more of a solved case with conspiracies that it isn't solved. So, you know, I don't really know. Um, it could be anyone. Honestly, it could be, could be the guy who confessed. It could be the other guy that was with them. It could be a number of different suspects that people have brought forward. I mean, he pissed off a lot of people, and he was incompetent in his job, in different types of jobs. The only thing he really did that made him famous was he killed Billy the Kid, but honestly, Billy the Kid, yes, he was a cowboy, and he did do some bad things, but he should have brought him in alive to question him and, you know, get charged by the law. Now, I know the last time they did this, he ran away. And he escaped. And I think maybe that's why Garrett just killed him. Because he's like, he'll probably escape again. I might as well just finish the job. But many think he's just an assassin. Which, in a way, he is. He didn't even let Billy, you know, explain himself. He didn't say anything. He just shot him. And no one knows if he died instantly or if it took a while for him to die. But Garrett killed him. And, you know, that was basically the only thing that he did that was, like, important. <laughs> I mean, he was a sheriff in a few places. He tried to investigate one case, but it didn't didn't go through. Um, and then he was murdered. Isn't that lovely? <laughs> His life was uh, full of not having enough money, killing people, doing dumb things. He met the president, though, so that's pretty cool. I mean, I'd say that was pretty baller. Um, but yeah. Comment down below what you think. Do you think this case is solved do you, or do you think it's unsolved? And if you think it is unsolved, what suspect do you think it is? And, you know, what's your, what's your information behind that theory? If you find more information than I have shared, then let me know. I'd love to, I'd love to hear it. Um, I hope you enjoyed as much as you can enjoy a story like this. I'll be back again on Thursday with another True Crime Thursday, Monday with whatever I decide to post. All right, I'll see you later.